Hi, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how you can use Terraform to deploy an Azure Key Vault and how you can do it using RBAC. Let's get started. So where we left off last time was we just deployed an Azure resource group called CI CD Key Vault RG. And we also just quickly went through what this does. One of the things I didn't really touch upon in the last session was this thing called Terraform State, which basically provides the state for what you've already deployed. And this is really important when you then do another Terraform apply, like Terraform plan, Terraform apply, because it's only gonna try and create the resources that you haven't already created. So as you can see in this state file here, you have this resource group that's already been created. It already knows that it's been created and it's kept that in state. If you then did a Terraform destroy, for example, it would then say that's been removed as well. So this is really, really powerful because it allows you to only have to add new resources rather than have to either recreate them each time, destroy things, which you don't always want to do because you might have data in there that you've added like when you've when you've had users using the system. So it's a really, really powerful tool to make sure that you don't just keep re-destroying the environment each and every time. So now we've had a quick look at the state. One of the other things that you can do with state is you can manage it locally, which is what we're doing right now and is what it does by default. Or you can specify a storage account or a storage blob to manage that state as well. If that's something that you're interested in, let me know. I can show you how to do that. But we're not going to be doing that in this lesson. We're just going to be using local state because I'm the only one using it. If someone else was then using it with me, that's when I would move it to a remote state. But because I'm the only one who needs to do deployment to resources in this tutorial, I don't need to worry about that. So the first thing we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to have a look at the key vault. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file called keyvault.tf. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to key vault. And I'm going to have a look at the Terraform here. So this is a really good way to get started because it gives you a lot of information that you can use to get started. So we can take some of this code here and we can change it to match what it is that we want. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this resource here, resource group, because we've already got a resource group that we've already got. So what this is saying is it's just going to create a resource group to deploy that example key vault when it's created. I'm also going to change the name here to match just so that it, it matches the example that I'm doing, but you can call this whatever you want really. And then again here, I'm just going to create the name for the key vault, which is going to be C I C D E vault sample. And it's important to know that this needs to be unique. So if it's not unique, then you're going to have a problem. Like I'll just go into the other key vault that I created and show you why. So what this does is it gives you a URI and that it creates that URI and that needs to be unique. So if it's not unique, then it's going to throw an error and you're going to have a problem there. So make sure that it's unique. And then what we need to do is we need to change the location as well. So what we can do is what this is basically doing is, and I'll just realize that it's, this is called RG. I'm going to rename that to be key vault rather than RG. And then I'm going to name that as well. And then all you're basically saying is I want to make sure that I'm using the exact same location as my resource group. And I want to be making sure that I specify my resource group name as well, because this is where I'm going to be deploying my Azure key vault to. These are required fields, so you need to specify them. And then you've got things like enable for disk encryption, which is important for when you're using keys. So we're going to keep that in. We've got our tenant ID, which we also need. This is the tenant, like we just speak previously spoke about. So if we go into directory, that's the tenant. But I've used this data Azure RM client config. And what this does is it just gets the information about the local user rather than getting having to search what the tenant ID is. So because I'm logged in as my current user, I'm logged in, the, I've already selected my tenant. That's what this is saying. I've got that information there. So I don't need to worry about trying to find that information because I can just use this here. 
and then I have the soft deletion retention here. I've disabled purge protection and I've made that false for now and I'm going to keep that as it is. And instead of this access policy, which I'm going to remove now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, there's a little flag in here, which walks for RBAC and you can enable RBAC authorization. So that's what I'm going to say that we're going to be using because that's what we're going to be using today. And we're going to be making sure that it uses RBAC. So once we've done that, then what we can do is again, we want to at least protect it to our IP address. So I'm going to basically say, I'm going to give it a network condition, which you can use here. So if you go into network ACLs, sometimes you need to do a network like a search because it's the, the docs can be a bit awful. So here, for example, it gives you that information. So what you want to say is specifies which traffic can bypass the network rules. And then I'm going to give myself an, the IP address, what I had earlier. So let me just get that up again. So this is my IP address. And then that's all I'm going to do for that. And again, we've got our SKU name here, which is the standard. So this it can be the premium or standard, but we're just going to go for standard because we don't need any of the premium features for this. So this pretty much is the exact same configuration as what we enabled in the front end here for this key vault here. The only difference really being is that we have a different name and that is it. But everything else is the same. So that's all we need to have. And I think the, the policy is 90 days rather than seven days. So we could change up to 90 days as well to, to make it the, the exact same if we wanted to. But other than that, everything's the same. And the only other thing that we need to do is we need to create our key. So we've got our key here. So what we can do is we can do our initial access control. So what I need to do is I need to provide myself with the same role assignment as, as my user, which is a um, key vault administrator. So what I need to do is I need to go into role assignments here and search for role assignments. And what we can do here is we can just say, Resource Azure RM. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this instead of contributor, I'm going to give it a Azure key for administrator. And that should be all I need to be able to create the key that is, is that uh, we actually don't need the, the jar at the front. I always, I find it really confusing with the jar sometimes because some things need a jar at the beginning and then some things don't. It's what needs a jar at the beginning. Really, really shouldn't need any of yours, but sometimes some things do. So it's really, really confusing. But yeah. And then once we've created our role assignment, we can then create our key. So. So first of all, let's just create this and show that this works. Ah, yeah, that's just me. That should be lowercase. Everything in terms of true and false is lowercase. So that's just something to be aware of. So if we have a look here, for example, we can see that this is just going to destroy the previous um, resource group. And the only reason that's going to do that is because we've changed the name of the resource in Terraform to be CICD key vault instead of CICD key vault RG. So that's just a key thing to know is this name here is very different to this name here. And so because I've changed the name here in Terraform, it is going to try and is, is going to destroy it. So that's fine. We haven't created any of the resources in Azure, but don't like just go ahead and start changing this like willy nilly because you might de destroy resources that you didn't mean to. And then you can see we've got our um, key vault here as well, which is um, going to be created. And then also our role assignment here. So let's apply it. Okay. So I know what's happened here. So because we've created the resource group here, 
and they have the same name. It's tried to do the creation of the resource group before it's managed to completely destroy the previous one. So now that's been destroyed, it should in theory be absolutely fine. And so if I do another apply, it should work okay. I'm going to try again. And in theory, this should work now, but because I renamed it and it's tried to create it at the same time as deleting it, it's, it's, it's run into that issue. So this is really useful information. So it'll give you information about creating. So you can see here that the resource group creation has been completed and then it moves on to creating the key vault. And it gives you that information on here. And this is the worst thing about Azure because it takes so long to deploy stuff. It really does. This is not a good thing. So whilst that's working there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my resource groups again and I'm going to go open up that resource group and then we're going to have a look. So it is creating the CICD key vault sample that we created here. It's just taking a long time to do it. So if we go in here, for example, you can see that if we go into our stuff to delete that's enabled, it's set that retention policy to 90 days, which is what we did here. If we go into our networking, you can see that it's configured my IP address. So my IP address has access to the key vault. And then it's, I don't know what else it's doing. Usually there's a few things that happen on in the background that it, it creates, it just takes a while for, for it to finish everything. So it has created now, we've got the creation completed and now it's creating the role assignment too. So once the role assignment has been created, I should be able to go into the access control here. So as you can see here, like if I go into that now and I look at the role assignments, my role won't be there. Oh, it has been there, but that's just because it's been created already. So it's quite quick to do those changes within the portal. It's just, for some reason, there's a delay between Terraform and getting the response back. So as you can see, I've been, my current user has been given the key vault administrator role, which now means that we can then create the key, which is what I'm going to be doing in the next lesson. So tune in to see that. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel and I'll see you next time.